Hello everybody and welcome. DJ Batman here, back once again with uh, my uh, show. Um, hoping to get it going some more um, and do more frequent shows. Um, I have with me uh, on future shows from now on uh, my girlfriend, um, Liv, and... Uh, we're going to tackle different su subjects and topics um, going on in the world, probably most likely in the United States, since that seems to be the big topic and the big um, focus in today's world, apparently, you know, because of Trump being president and all that fun jazz thingies. But, um, but anyways, uh, today we're talking about uh, gun control and uh, whether... Uh, we think that, um, well, us personally, but all around, if we need more gun control or not. Um, I uh, have been watching a lot of stuff lately. I've been watching a lot of the protests and the walkouts um, that have been going on um, all over the place. And, um, you know, so... I got a little bit of a grasp on what's going on, for the most part. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so if you would like to chat along with, if you are currently listening, uh, go in and jump in the chat, and uh, we will respond to uh, comments and stuff as we talk. Um, and hoping to do, like I said before, more shows like this in the future. Um... So, but anyways, uh, let's go and get into the topic, and of course the topic, like I said before, for today, is gun control. Do we need more of it or not? Uh, go ahead and uh, put some two cents in. <coughs> so, w what do you think? Do you think that we need more gun control, or... Uh, the process currently in place for obtaining a gun needs to be altered slightly to include classes to obtain the license for the gun, similar to the, the classes you have to go through to obtain the license for a car, both potentially deadly weapons. Um, the background check system needs to be updated and more thorough. It needs to be national, so that no matter where you are in the country, if your name is run through the background check and you come up with any um, previous offenses or um, violent tendencies, you can be denied that gun. However, um, gun... Banning guns is the wrong way to go, because even if guns were banned to the civilian populace, criminals would still be able to obtain them, and then we'd just be left with an unarmed populace that would be easy targets for any um, criminals. Well, I mean, don't you think that it really should come down to uh, certain states should uh, do what other states do? Because um, most states do have, um, they require you to take a gun safety class uh, before getting your gu gun, along with uh, fingerprints, license insurance, and stuff like that. So don't you think that we should more have other states do the same, that currently don't have that instead of putting more restrictions and because i mean because f far as i know now the process of going through i know here in in in, in our state they you have to go through a, a big background check you know gun safety classes and all that stuff so don't you think it'd be more just getting those other states to jump on board with that yeah be a good first step to a more well, responsible and safe society. Alright. Well, yeah, um, 
you know, because like, like I said, um, there are a lot of states um, who do require, you know, more extensive background checks. Um, now, of course, let's go and get on the topic of the shooter from the Parkland uh, shooting and uh, what happened there. For, so, for me, I always wait at least two weeks before um, jumping in on anything, to be honest, because you usually find out more information time, a little bit afterwards. Uh, but as far as I, I've, I've gathered from all the information is that they this kid had been in trouble over 40 different separate occasions with law enforcement and, and, and other things. And the fact that for a year he had been under surveillance by different organizations and stuff for, for things he's done, but somehow that information was not given to the authorities for when he got his gun, it would affect his background check. So I also think it needs to come down to is we need to force law enforcement and other organizations to give that information to the bureau that, uh, or the place that, um, pushes background checks so that when we get information about people, we get the full facts about who they are and the stuff they've done so we can determine, you know, hey, they shouldn't have a gun. Because that's the other thing is that we, that, that happens is that a lot of organizations don't do their job 100%, don't let, let all the information out mm -hmm. so that people can do their job and make sure people don't get stuff they don't need. There seems to be a need for some sort of centralized database that health, like mental health records, criminal records, anything that would be uh, relevant can be uh, all accessed through one service, another background check. Well, it also takes getting those places to even doing their job in the first place and putting that information there. Because of how private, private we've gotten in today's world, uh, a lot of people don't want information out. But you know, if if someone's a wackadoo, we need to know they're a wackadoo. Basically, that's how I that's how I look at it. Um, now, I do believe that the restrictions for certain ailments should be lessened, um, mainly because so many people who are as normal as you could possibly get and wouldn't cause harm would be technically denied under some of these restrictions that are that are in place because of things like bipolar or or uh, mental issues or other things like that which need to be come into account because not everybody that falls under those categories are all the same not everybody that that has bipolar has it the same some people have it way less than others some people it's just a you know an everyday thing and some people it's a, a rare occurrence but they never get that out of control that's the other thing that we need to take into account when allowing people to get the stuff they need is that the severity needs to be taken into account because like I said not everybody has the same condition when labeled with something. Well, perhaps there could be an appeals process in which they are um, evaluated by a psychiatrist or some other uh, qualified professional as to whether, you know, both in the short term and the long term, how uh, stable you know, this person claims to be. <laughs> and would you think that something like that would, um, uh, if we impl placed that kind of thing for evaluations through a therapist, uh, do you think that we should have that in the cost of getting the gun, or should it be a thing that we should do for free it's just so that we make sure that people have valuations to make uh, sure they're capable of owning a gun again just uh draw the parallel to uh obtaining a driver's license you know you pay for driver's ed classes you pay 
for, you know, somebody to take their time out of their day and, you know, show you how to do this. And just make it a similar process. Well, but the but the one thing you do have to look at is that um, driving a car isn't quite a right. It's more of a privilege. So would you yeah. think that they would still need to be treated differently or still the same, knowing, knowing that? Both are potentially deadly to another human being, so in order to be entrusted with the control of it... Yeah, you should have to go undergo some, some, somewhat extensive training. Right? Well, but also you also have to do look at is if we do make things a little too tough to to get a gun, then some people might just straight up go to the black market, or even even bigger routes, buy a three D printer and print them, which you can do a lot of that stuff in today's modern world. Especially with how 3D printers can print full-on metal pieces. There was a guy who even uh, put the information online and actually had the FBI uh, contact him and had him remove it. But he actually put the plans on how to build and make a gun using a 3D printer. And it would fire a bullet. Um, so, you know, a lot, a lot of things you know people have to take in consideration, especially when it comes to our modern day technology and what we can and cannot do. Um, the other thing I think needs to be taken into more of account is the fact that AR does not and AR15 does not stand for automatic, I mean assault rifle. A lot of people think that, but it's not. It's the name of the company themselves. Um, yeah, um, but of course the one thing I've I've seen a lot is that people who say we need to ban ass, uh, assault rifles always get them confused with semi-automatics. But the one thing you have to keep in mind is that most guns are semi-automatic, and a lot of people get the two confused. Semi-automatic is every time you pull the trigger, it shoots a bullet. That's basically what most ARs are. Pretty much every AR is. You pull the trigger and it fires a bullet. Salt rifles are the ones where you pull the trigger and it completely shoots over and over again without having to pull it. But those kind of guns, you have to have a federal license to even purchase or even own. You have to go through extensive background checks and many other things to even own an assault rifle. And the, the more rounds, most people don't even have an assault rifle because pff, the government doesn't want to give you that crap. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I feel bad for, you know, a lot of these, a lot of what, what's been going on in schools, but also at the same time, I do believe things need to quit being over-exaggerated more than they have been because, you know, I see all these numbers and, you know all these shootings going on, and I kind of wonder if they're as bad as they say they are, because it just seems like the media at this point seems to focus on the more destructive situations in our country at the moment to get us to be all freaked out and more worried than ever before, when actually if you do some research, you'll actually find we're less violent than we have been in a long time. We're more educated. We're getting a lot smarter than we currently are. It's just that People watch the news way too much. Me, I kind of pretty much just tuned off. I pretty much watch the stuff firsthand. If there's a protest going on, I get on a I get on a service and I watch the person with their phone live. So then I'm getting an actual accurate description. It's like with the protests, you know, that happened during uh, when, like, example, like when Trump got elected. You know, in the state I'm in, you know. The, the large city, they had a bunch of protests and stuff. People were claiming that, you know, like the police were being too much. But I watched the stuff live. I saw what was going on. I saw that, you know, they were causing damage and, and being destructive and, you know, breaking windows, smashing buildings. You know, it, it's just, it's just, 
you know, things need to quit getting out of hand as much as they do. We need to reel ourselves in a bit more and to stop for a second and ask our, ask ourselves, is this being portrayed accurately or is it being pushed as a narrative uh, with a bigger picture in mind for what is being uh, currently pushed? Um, because sometimes it makes me wonder when things go on Things like this get bigger and bigger when small things happen. And the media um, is um, uh, is pushing, you know, their stuff more. Because, you know... Eh. Like, there was a shooting in Texas in which a man used an AR-15 to save a group of churchgoers who were being shot at by an assailant, but you didn't hear about that. You heard about the AR-15 used in the school. Well, yeah, yeah, the, well, it's just like the students that didn't want to walk out or are against what's being pushed, because as far as I've done enough research, and it's, and I'm going to tell you people right now, I don't listen to CNN or Fox News, I'll watch both of them and kind of laugh at them, to be honest, because they, 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 they push too much bullshit most of the time. But anyways, there are kids who aren't for all this, you know, what's going on, because these walkouts aren't about, you know, saying, hey, we, we, we feel bad for what happened to the kids. That's a portion of what it's about. But what it's really about is about pushing of banning guns in the long run. See, he, 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 here's the thing that kind of upsets me when it comes to this kind of topic. I can go on my Facebook feed and, and see people posting stuff like, you know, we need to ban all guns or we need to ban all, all these guns. And then they turn around and they go, oh, no, we're not trying to ban your guns. And I go, um, didn't you just post that like two days ago that you were trying to ban guns? That, that's the thing. I used to consider myself a liberal. I used to consider myself somebody on the left. But I completely left that and said, you know what? Screw all sides. They're all crazy and dumb. Because what really ends up happening, Black Lives Matter, feminism, liberals, Republicans, conservatives, whatever. doesn't matter what group you, 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 you choose. The moment you choose to be with that group... You are picking a side, and you are basically telling the other side to go fuck themselves. Which I don't think is a good way of starting. I think what we should be doing is sitting down at a table with people who we disagree with. It's just like, you know, it's like I always tell, you know, you guys I'm going to be telling for the first time. But for me, I don't like Trump either. I don't like any of the candidates, to be honest. I thought we were going to be screwed either way. But anyways, other than that, it doesn't matter if you hate, let's say, Trump, for an example. If he wants to talk to you about an issue that is going on, and he's the president, you fucking talk to him. You don't go, fuck you, I'm not going to talk to you because I don't like you. Right there, you, you, you squash the conversation. You completely tell the other side, we're not going to listen to you whatsoever. So then they fight you, you fight them, and then you're in this constant battle of fighting back and forth. And over time, you just keep fighting, and eventually you fucking forget why the fight even began. It's, it's like in the Middle East, you know, between the Muslims and the Jews. How they've been fighting for thousands of years. I haven't really fully looked into it. I just want to bring it as an example. But, you know, it's just... We, we have to learn to sit at the table with, with our enemy. You know, there's people out there, you know, like 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 example, like with the KKK. There's people out there who are of African descent who are going into these groups and finding a way to get them to stop being racist because they're trying to come at them from their point of view but then get them to see how they're seeing it. Same thing we need to do with this, with gun control, is that we need to see it from the side, from the people who don't live in cities, people who, you know, a big portion of this population who don't live in cities who live on farms or in rural areas or... You know, in areas where, you know, they need that kind of protection because they got a lot to lose. Um, 
you know. So th- th- there, there's a lot, especially now that weed's becoming more legal. More and more people are going to want to steal that stuff. You know, I, I remember back in the day, people constantly coming up to me, hey man, you want to go help rob some dude's plants? And I'd be like, fuck no, because I'm going to get my ass shot. <laughs> you know? Because to be honest, people have the right to protect themselves and their property. Um, now, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of going all over the place at this point, but, but my main focus is that, you know, we need to learn to sit on either side of the table and talk, basically. I've seen some videos on YouTube where they do that and I, and I love it and it's great and it's amazing. Because it gets people from each side to be able to talk to each other. Now, does it always end up perfect? Well, not really. But that's because the the conversations don't go on long enough. Um, one thing I do want to eventually do on this channel is um, get some people from both sides on here and have a kind of discussion or debate of topics that need to go on. Um things that are going on over time, especially this subject as well, which I know is going to be dragging on for some time at this point, um, because now more and more shootings are happening, more and more it's going to get brought up. Of course, I did remember hearing about a bombing not too long ago, which I do want to bring that up to consideration, that if you do start banning certain types of guns or, or doing certain things because of people being violent, people will, the, the criminals or the people who were bullied or picked on in school who then want to turn around and do something to their school will probably go with a more volatile and more destructive means if they can't get a hold of something. Which, to be honest, they shouldn't be able to get a hold of any of that stuff. That's my main point there. Sorry. That, that should be focused on, though, not so much how the kids got the guns, but why they felt driven to do so, and how to address and prevent that. So in a way, these kids that are protesting against the guns should not just be protesting against the guns, but also bring up the fact that kids are bullied heavily, and that they need to learn to stop that more than anything to stop kids from wanting to turn around and then shoot up a school of people that they feel treated them poorly Mm -hmm. when they're probably more likely treated like shit at home and then projects that when they you know you know we don't really know the story behind a lot of people's things they go through or or what they deal with yeah like social workers may need to be involved definitely Mental health um, professionals in the schools. Well, I think, well, yeah, I, I agree that we need to have more of that. But at the same time, we need to have confident, uh, not confident, um, real people to do that. Because as far as I've, I've heard stories from people I know that have dealt with, you know, all those social workers and all that stuff. And they don't end too well a lot of them don't um and that's the other thing is that people don't end up getting the help they really need and that's why i say that most stuff in today's world needs to be handled by each state each state needs to be able to fund different things and different parts that they think are important so like let's say our state thinks it's important for checking up on somebody's history and see if they're, you know... It should be a national thing, like... No, I'm just meaning, like, taking the government mainly out of it, because whenever you put the government in in charge of controlling the states, it never goes well. Like with now. I would probably disagree with that. Alright. Because, I mean, if you look at a lot of institutions... You know, um, they they don't get the fundings they always need because of whatever is going on in that state. If 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 a government can can say they're not going to give a state money because of something they're doing, that should not happen. People, the states need to get the fundings they need. You know, to to do the things they do. Plus, at the same time, there needs to be a regulation that the states don't 
focus on certain parts of their state more than others. Like, I example... Mean, that's part of the problem, is that it's so, like, segregated. Like, each state doing its own thing. Like, how are the databases supposed to be connected for, you know, the background checks? How are the classes that you need to go through to get the licenses to be regulated and established and unless it's across the country like well no you would have each state contact each other and they would work with each other because it should be that the state's way more complicated well i mean it may sound more complicated but in the long run it's it's easier to take the government's hand out of it and let the states it, it, it's it's kind of like when an amendment needs to be pushed. I with that. Because the because the government they already have too much control over stuff, and they need to. Somebody out there might need CPR. Um. Um. But anyways, um. Yeah, but. Anyways. Um, we'll have another um, episode or whatever this is called on the feminism and the SJWs. I'd really like to tackle that topic in the future. Oh, that'll be one of our future uh, shows. We're going to be tackling a little bit of everything. Uh, Antifa, feminism, Black Lives Matter, all of them. Um, Let us know what you think. Um... But, um, but yeah, so, um, we're gonna do these every Friday, um, I gotta get a new, uh, Facebook page going for this channel, um, and I'll, I'll keep you up and form, uh, informed on that, um, but in the meantime, um, a few things I need to put out there, um, one, there's an app called Ibotta. If you would like to save money while going shopping uh, every day at gr grocery stores or online, check check that out. I will have that in the description below of um, this. Um, and I'll have some other um, apps put in the description as well for helping save money. There's another app if you need a, a, a loan or help build your credit. There's an app called Moneyline. I'll have that in the description below as well. Uh, both of those, you will receive a bonus for using the uh, for using the code below, and um, you know, start helping uh, save money or make money or build credit that you know some of us need. But anyways, um, DJ Batman signing out and. Uh, me and uh, Liv will talk to you next time. Till then, later. <laughs>